This is amazing. Like what well, we put in one, two, four, six, eight, 12 screws, four washers, and a power cable. And we're printing. Wowie. What's up, guys? Wayne Stevenson here, and I'm at it again. I've got another new 3D printer that we're going to unbox, assemble, and print with. So our next victim is yet another Airy One 3D printer. This one's a little smaller than the Thinker SE. If you remember, I just recently did a review for that one. Love that printer. This one's a little bit smaller and I think it might actually replace my old uh, Prusa i3 clone. Here we are guys, the Airy One ER20. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know much about this printer other than it's smaller than my other ones as well it has auto bed leveling and hold on the rumor has it that the print bed is attached solidly to the y-axis now i might have taken this out of context because it's brand new and i didn't bother doing any homework because i was really impressed with the thinker sc and i thought mm, i trust these guys it's a smaller printer i could use with a little smaller one to go on my next to my workstation but if that is true if that is what I understand, that means the end of bed leveling knobs. Which means this will not only make this the fastest setup of a 3D printer I've ever seen, it'll also mean less maintenance. That means you don't have the frustration of trying to get the perfect level with a piece of paper and knobs anymore. You should be able to just adjust your Z-axis to offset, um, your nozzle offset, and away you go. So, uh, out of all my videos, I do not believe I've actually said this yet, but I'm not going to be the exception. I'm not going to be the exception. Without further ado, let's get unboxing. we go behold the user manual we don't need that nice. filament sample lovely it's beautiful oh, I wasn't expecting that to be that thick oh. whoa hello my little friend all right, there's the bed. One of these boxes. Bowden tube, some extra belt, knob, bed clips, another spatula, filament. Tool holder and tools. Ooh, I got another snip, another wrench. All right. Okay, so they have not. Okay, so they haven't provided a quick setup guide here, um, or a paper one, anyhow. Uh, I did a quick look through the manual here, and it says that there is a quick uh, setup guide on the SD card that is provided. So that will be somewhere here. Let's take a look. Okay, so that'll be, there's an SD card right there. And a little adapter. I threw my last adapter out here. These are cheap adapters. Um, I'm just expecting half of that to get stuck in my USB slot. So I'm just gonna use the SD card adapter um, that I have, because I got a card reader. Um, if you don't have a card reader, I'd recommend going to the store, getting a better quality uh, USB SD adapter, because I don't trust these cheap ones. Just tossed it. Toss my other one, and I'm gonna toss this one. Anyhow, I'm gonna go upstairs, have a quick look. It should be fairly simple. It should be take your gantry, attach your gantry to the base with provided screws, which I imagine they are, yeah, right here. I imagine four screws, and then probably uh, attach the 
extruder nozzle uh, onto the x-axis. Probably was going to go on. I'm going to confirm in the video just to play it safe so that we are all on the same page just in case you guys buy one of these for yourself. Anyhow, I'll go do that quickly and I'll be back. Okay guys, pretty straightforward. So, these are your bed clips. These two screws here should uh, attach the, uh, the nozzle assembly onto the x-axis. These four long ones will be going up into the uh, uh, z-axis gantry. And these four will go in uh, perpendicular to that. And these four washers should go, they're lock washers here. Lock spring washers, they'll go up through the bottom and should lock those on. So I'm going to go get some tools and then we'll get started. One other thing we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to thread in our Z-axis. It's got dual Z-axis, way cool. We're going to thread those in and then we're going to put the uh, gantry onto the base. And we're going to go up underneath with these four and I'm going to put these four perpendicular and that will hold everything in place. You should hold the spool holder on. One of them will. One of them will. Motors are in the base already so we don't have to uh, mess about with those. Anyhow, I'll go get some screwdrivers and we'll get assembling. So everyone does provide everything you need to assemble these printers. You got uh, a wrench in there, you got a little tiny screwdriver, you got snips, you got uh, a wrench for your nozzle. Imagine that's for the nozzle. Um, anyhow, I don't like using um, the Allen keys if I can prevent that. Um, I like using these guys right here. Um, so, I do recommend it. It's going to work better for you assembling it with those tools. Uh, so just for your information, if you wanted to get your own, you're looking at a 2 mil, a 2.5 mil, and a 3 mil Allen um, oh, screwdriver. You can get these everywhere. Amazon, AliExpress, eBay, Banggood. Uh, should have them. I'll put some links down below if I can remember and you can buy them for yourself if uh, You want to go down that route. I love them. I use them for building my quadcopters uh, anything that requires um, Allen keys suggest getting these Okay guys, be careful when you're lifting this because your Z-axis is moving by itself because there's uh, no lead screws holding that in there. So let's open this up and start threading this in. Once that's, uh, once that's threaded on, we can uh, attach it to the gantry. Now you got to come in from the bottom up because you got some uh, stops on there. And you don't want to pry it apart because you risk bending these. So you want to be gentle. Um, if you need to cut, but be very careful too because you could end up marring the uh, the steel there, and that can cause extra friction so be careful with your knife you don't want to don't want to put any slices on here so the steel of your knife might be harder than the steel of this I've had these before where somebody's taken a tool either myself inadvertently or whatever but put a slice right down the whole side which uh, that just trues chews through your um, your lead screw nut. So you're always wearing it down. Doesn't necessarily affect your print at all, just wear and tear is a lot more. 
these are inexpensive too. Like, I mean, if you ever damage it, you know, they're cheap enough you can buy them online. Not a deal breaker if you ever get one bent or you damage one. This little piece of foam here, I'm just going to slide that off. I don't think there's any need for it. Nope. And you just thread that into your lead screw nut. Check these uh, lead screw nuts too. Make sure those are not loose. I noticed already that this one's pretty loose. missing a screw so it's missing one of the lead screw nuts there that the lead screw nut is missing a retaining screw and I don't know if that's intentional or not but I'm gonna make sure that these are tightened up because you don't want them falling apart on you. All right. So let's just leave that here. I'm going to check the uh, the box later to see if it fell off or if it's supposed to be like that. Okay, in case you guys didn't see that, the lead screw nut by the uh, extruder motor was had one of the uh, retaining screws missing on that one. So I tightened the other one up because it was loose, and I'm going to check the box, see if uh, it was intentionally left out, or if there should be one on either side, like on the other side of the uh, on the other Z screw um, retainer, or the Z screw nut. So I'll check that out and then uh, we're pretty much ready to pull the rest of the stuff out of the box anyhow. So let's do that. slick all right so those are where those screws go there so that's what you want to check you want to make sure those things are uh, tightened up not loose So these ones have machined holes, so they just go straight in. You don't have a nut underneath here, it just screws right into there. So that's what we're gonna do with this one. There, both are secure. will flop down real quick when I'm putting it on. So you want to hold everything as tight as you can or firmly as you can. Okay, so like I said, you want to 
hold everything carefully as you put this on. And hold on your Z screws. And you want me to put those screws into your Z screw uh, shaft holder there. Now we want to uh, manipulate these Z-screws so that this extrusion slips down into here so we can get those holes down. There we go. I don't know if turning them actually really did anything other than loosen things up here, but now this is in all the way. We can now attach the, uh, the screws to go into here. So let's do that now. We're going to use our 2.5 mil Allen wrench. That should get through there. So let's give that a shot. Looks like we've caught it. Beautiful. I'm just going to do one side at a time. actually love how this uh, goes together it's traditionally on these styles of printers I'm having to worry about the whole top gantry falling down while I'm trying to come in through the bottom and put the screws on so these uh, brackets here will hold the gantry in place so that when I tilt the, uh, the base to get at the screw holes from underneath, I am not going to drop everything. So that was an excellent, excellent idea that they came up with there. So I think once I... Uh, do this while I'm at it. I'm just going to tighten up the uh, retaining screws there for the Z screw. Get that out of the way. So I do want to make sure that it's in all the way. So I'm going to hold this and screw this this way. So if it can go down any into it, it will. And it looks like it's down all the way. So now I can tighten this. Let's take a look here. Looks like a uh, yeah, it looks like a two and a half metric. Let's give this bottom one a make sure that's snug too, and we'll do the same with this side here. Make sure it's screwed in all the way. Sometimes they'll. Uh, kind of follow their groove there. you know while I'm at it may as well just try and snug everything up here just in case these things have traveled all over the world so I 
have any issues now is when I want to find them, not later. I'm not trying to strip any heads, I'm just trying to make sure that everything is good. I'm going to leave the foam on here till I'm done. And let's put that that way. Now we can uh, prep these by putting our washers on. And for this one, we're going to use a three mil driver. And I'm going to make sure I hold this so it's not flopping and doesn't slam into my glass bed and break that. I'm going to gently, because after all, this is just held on with plastic for the most part. I'm just going to gently come in through the bottom hoping to make contact with the hole and it looks like I got that. I'm going to snug it up. I just want a little bit. Put both in on each side. Once I uh, can ensure that they're all in there, then I'll come back and tighten them up. So I don't want to Hold any twist. Yeah. I want them to find their uh, natural resting spot. So far, this uh, setup's been a breeze. I'm really impressed. If you get too much tension, don't force it. So you're cross threaded if that's the case. This one doesn't feel that great. So it might be cross threaded, but it's still going in. Sm still going in smoothly. All right, last one. Let's uh, move on. I'm gonna loosen these other ones off just a tad there, just in case. And just get it snug. So you do not want to risk stripping those holes. Let's take those back up. Move around. This is really coming together great. I'm loving this.
and we all attach our nozzle extruder. There we go. I'll make sure you're not uh, pinching this. It should sit flat. Let's see. That'll go. There we go. Yeah, that'll do the trick. There's our auto bed leveling sensor there. This is what the nozzle looks like here. You got a nice silicone boot on it. Excellent cooling. Parts cooling. And your uh, heat brake cooling. So for here, I'm going to take our 2 mil and just get it started each side. Not much holds this on. There. That's that. Also relieve tension in your Bowden tube here just in case there's any weird twists going on. There's not though, so this is nice. Should have excellent movement. Now we'll have to uh, plug in our wires. Shouldn't be too much going on here. Looks like, uh, yeah, not much for wires at all. We got a extruder. Looks like the x-axis uh, connector and these here. Everything else looks like it's already attached. Thermistor, bed leveling, so. Should just need to plug that in for the extruder and the X up there. And we need to find out where that other plug goes. So your X this is your X motor right here. That's where this plug will go. Keep an eye out for the uh, the key on there, right? So that little key notch goes here. All right. Extruder motor goes there. Again, watch for the uh, the key there. Now we got to find out where this goes. It's hiding way over there. It's really dark. So make sure you have a good light. Do that. Oh, come on. I can't even see. There we go. Yeah, as luck would have it, I'm blocking my light with my fingers. There we go. Boom. Excellent. All right, let's take this off. We'll get to the bed here shortly, don't you worry. Oh, do, 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 do. Okay. I'll put a knob on.
for these bulldog clips. Not going to need them. And here's the glass bed. There. Slick. It's packed beautifully. Oh man. And more vacuum seal. Let's just see. Oh wow, that's Pretty flat bed. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's see if the rumors are true and see if there truly are no bed leveling knobs. Let's check it out. Let's pull this foam out. <laughs> the rumors are true. Look at that. It's like riveted in there or something. That is so cool. All right. So very cool. All right. Let's uh Let's get those bed clips in and I think we're done. Holy crap, that was fast. That was so fast. Man, we're done. Like we just put clips in and we plug the damn thing in. Oh, spool holder, spool. We gotta put the spool holder on. That's it. That's it and we're printing. Ha, ah, man, it's crazy. So we're gonna have to be careful here. Um, I don't know where exactly they had intended uh, these bed clips to go. So you got to make sure that the nozzle ain't going to slam into them during uh, bed leveling or printing. So we got to be very careful with our um, be very careful with what we're doing here. Okay, let's get the uh, Let's get this on and then we can get printing. So, I, uh, <laughs> so I, I didn't, I didn't really, uh, look at the instructions much. So I just spent a few minutes trying to find the T nuts for this. There is no T nuts. They've actually machined, uh, machined holes into the top of the gantry to put this on. So, it, that's awesome. Not pissing around with T-nuts anymore. Um, way cool. You see them right there? That's where it's going. I'm gonna use a two and a half mil Allen key. I imagine this will go like so. Let's see, where is that? It's gonna be a challenge. Challenge to do it from that side. Let's go like this. Let's see if we can find that first hole. Should be right around here. There we go. Get lucky if I don't drop this all on my camera. Let's see. There we go. Very nice.
We are good. We are good. A um, couple things I'm going to do here first before we, uh, before we get started. And then I'll plug it in. Check out uh, where's the limit switches on this thing. Well, it's got 2209s on it. Um, I think. Yeah, 2209s. Maybe it's got sensorless homing enabled. Let's see if there's... I don't see any limit switches, so I'm thinking it's got sensorless homing set up. I don't know. I'll... Yeah, that's probably what the case is here. That's cool. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the x-axis is level to the bed. Okay, to do that, we just need something to act as a spacer that we can lay the gantry or the x-axis down on here. I find uh, when you're high up, some sort of can is good, and then we just use our fingers to turn both um, lead screws here. And they both go in the same direction. So we're just going to tap that can. And that's pretty, uh, pretty good. Maybe we can use a caliper to make it perfect, but I think we're... I think we're perfect as is. Do it gently so you don't scratch your bed. I could come down just a little bit on this side. There, that should be good. That's it. Um, before we do anything more though, Gonna make sure the uh, extruder motor, or the extruder is screwed on good. Just like that, scope. There we go. And uh, yeah, that is that. One last thing, I want to check the, uh, the extruder gear. These grub screws are notorious for causing problems, so. Make sure it is. They're both tight. That will make your life more pleasant. That other one, there was like a fraction of a turn there, which means that probably would have eventually worked itself loose. All right. So those little set screws are uh, 1.5 mil, typically. Um, I didn't even see if this came with a 1.5 mil, uh, but I got 1.5 mils in Allen keys and this. Make sure you get one, because you are going to need one one day. One day, those set screws, those grub screws for your, uh, on your motor, they're gonna go. They're gonna let go one day and uh, and check them regularly. Um, I like to put, you know, if I'm ever doing any uh, adjustments or anything, I'll put some uh, blue thread locker on there. That gives you a little bit of extra security, um, making sure it doesn't come out. So keep that in mind. Um, check them regularly as part of your maintenance schedule. They do work themselves loose. Thread locker, love it recommend it. Um, I'm not going to put it on until that lets go. And then when it lets go and they go to repair it, I'm going to put the blue thread locker on it and I'll be happy camper going forward forever. All right, let's do a recap of the Airy One ER23D printer. Comes with everything you need to get it assembled. You got tools, you got some uh, test filament, you got a spare Bowden tube, spare uh, GT2 cables, you got spare pneumatic fittings, spare screws, clamps, uh, nozzle um, unclogger and spare nozzle. 
comes with the uh, snips, comes with Allen keys, comes with a wrench, comes with your USB cable, comes with instructions, comes with a spatula, comes with a micro SD card and a USB adapter for that, comes with the power cable. So that's what it comes with. Let's check out the machine itself. So as we've confirmed, this bed is attached solidly to the Y axis. There's no bed leveling screws anymore. No, no knobs, nothing. It's, it's good. It's, it's flat. You can see how flat it is. The glass is nice and thick. Um, you're not getting any flatter on a bed than this. Yeah, it's got a 250 by 220 by 200 build surface. Really cool. So, I mean, it's not a big one. Um, it's on the smaller end, which means it's great for desktop printing. You can put it next to your workstation, in your computer room, or wherever, your den. Uh, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, it's a 24 volt printer, which means you're going to have uh, quick heating of your bed and of your nozzle, especially uh, given the size of the bed. Uh, it should be lightning fast. Uh, you've got your 3D, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, your uh, your automatic bed leveling right here. I, I haven't seen any uh, end stops here. Um, so I'm thinking because it, I believe it uses the Trinamic TMC 2209s, it uh, could very well have the, um, the sensorless end stops. Um, sensorless homing. I'm thinking. I, I don't know. I mean, they could be hidden somewhere. I just don't see them. Um, and if that's the case, it's a it's a really clean uh, a really clean setup. I mean, the the motors, power supply, everything's hidden in the base here. It's a really sleek setup. Um, not a lot of places for dust to get. So I'm really loving that. Uh, it's just an overall clean clean setup. You can't see any wires whatsoever. Um, I'm loving it so far. This is amazing. I'm gonna put some. Uh, I'm gonna plug it in. Let's test out the uh, test out the homing on it. Make sure the homing on all the access is good. Um, and then we'll throw some filament in it and print us a Benchy. Actually, we'll see what they've got for uh, for the test files first. Um, but yes, let's plug it in and test out our sensors. First off, really cool. Um, well, I shouldn't say cool, it should be a standard, but uh, power jack's right on the back. The last, uh, the thing where I see power supply is standalone and it uh, plugs in from the side, which I absolutely hate because the, that limits, uh, it increases the footprint of the machine, meaning you need more space. Let's see what Marlin we're running. 2.0.5.3. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, let's uh, let's test our axis. Make sure everything is moving good. Let's move the axis. The x-axis. Oh, almost broke that. All right, we're gonna move it left and right. Okay, do the Y, move it to me, and away from me. All right, let's check the Z. Move you up. And move you down. All right, that's working. Now, I love to test. Actually, I <laughs> I won't do it any other way. Um, if I'm testing the, uh, let's see if this will do cold extrusion. Okay, perfect. Hot end too cold, so we don't have to worry about cold extrusion on this one. Let's uh, let's do an auto home. Now we're gonna do. Um, we're, we're gonna manually test out the homing. So, like I said, I don't see any um, mechanical end stops right now. I mean, they they could be there. They could be just hidden. Well, this play, this uh, printer's really. Um, yeah, I 
I don't see any at all. So I'm thinking it's centerless. So let's just do an auto home and we're going to get our fingers in use here because we're going to stop it with our fingers just to make sure everything is working. So let's see. Okay. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Okay. There. And it's working. Perfect. So let's just home it all the way now. Oops, motion, auto home. Get ready on the reset button in case we encounter problems. Nice. All right, we're gonna have to grease up that, uh, grease up those um, lead screws because I can hear them rubbing. Maybe I made things too tight. I doubt it. Or it could be up top. I'm hearing it. No, it's not too tight. I won't worry about it now, though. Um, let's test our bed. So let's go up to 65 and we'll bring our nozzle up to 200. Then we can attempt to do a bed leveling. Like the nozzle's going up quick. Bed's slowly going up. So the reason that we're heating everything up uh, before we do the automatic bed leveling is we get thermal expansion or contraction. So we want everything to be the temperature that we're gonna be operating at before we set uh, the matrix um, or the mesh bed leveling, before we determine how level that bed is and store those features, we want it at the temperature that everything is gonna run because those values are gonna change depending on the temperature that the bed and everything is at. They'll expand, they'll contract, and if you're looking for accuracy, you're not gonna get it unless you do it at the temperature you're gonna be operating at. I know I kind of rambled on about that, but uh, I think you get the gist of it. Level it at the temperature you're going to be using it at, and you will have better accuracy. We're almost there. We're at uh, 46 degrees, 200 degrees already on the uh, nozzle. Before we print, I'm going to clean this off with alcohol because I can already see all my nasty fingerprints on the bed. I don't know if uh, you'll be able to see it, but clean that with alcohol. It's also a good idea too because uh, I mean it was in contact with the uh, that cling wrap there and who knows if there's any oil residues coming off of that uh, that could give you adhesion problems. I'm using 65 degrees Celsius on this because that uh, my Thinker SE uh, that's the temperature that I need to run that one at for good adhesion. So I'm just going to assume it's a similar uh, similar similar texture. Is that one here so I'm just gonna do another homing right here whoa looks like we got some filament coming out now it obviously indicates that they tested it already at the factory let me just go get a set of tweezers here to get that out of there there we go yoink All right, a few more degrees and then we can bed level.
Ah, what's five degrees going to do? Okay, motion, level bed. Probably need some sort of auto bed leveling, actually. No, there we go. It's doing it. Point of 209. Perfect. Let's store those values if we can. I'm hoping that'll store it. All right. It's already got a offset of minus 2.7 in there. Calibrate Z. Yeah, touch. Put the wings on. Okay, let's load up some filament. Okay guys, um, change of plans here. I'm gonna go, I just checked out their uh, their preheat uh, settings for PLA. They recommend um, 60 degrees and 200. So I'm just gonna try out 60 degrees on this bed and hopefully that does the trick. Do an auto home here. All right, we're gonna test out this ER20 with this Airy one. Green PLA. This stuff's some stuff I picked up I think February or March. It's got untidy winding, so do not be, it says so right on the box. So don't be shocked when you see the untidy winding, which is uncharacteristic of every one of filament. I've been using their filament a whole bunch uh, this year. Um, let's get this open. As always, stabby stabby! Yeah. That's a nice color. Beautiful. Beautiful color. All right. Get that pushed out. Pushed. Everyone. They should build tambourines into this or something. Make it more useful. All right. Let's go to the machine. Alright. I'm gonna snip that. I'm gonna snip it straight. Try out my brand new snippies. Snippy, snippy. I didn't think I'd like these as much as my uh, side cutters, but oh man, I just tangled my filament up. Luckily, can't be that tangled. There we go, perfect. <laughs> Eat it into the bowling tube. Okay. 
Okay. A bend on that one. Can be tricker. The uh, tricker, tricker, tricker trait. Can be tricky getting into the extruder hole. Sometimes you got to make a little bend on it. And there we go. She's fed in. She's coming out. Oh, shit. Perfect. There. Out with the green. Green. Let's see what we got here. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Let's try it. Get ready to stop this just in case we slam into the bed. We're printing. Nice and fast and quiet. Loving that Trinamic 2209s. Very cool. This is going to be silent. I mean, you can barely hear the uh, fans as well. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's. Might have to adjust the. Uh, Gimme, give gimme. Give no, maybe not. I think we're good. I'm gonna have to adjust nothing. Well, let's let it do its thing. Beautiful brim. Well, let's come back to it. Looks like those, uh, those lines are perfect. Guys, I have done absolutely zero manual bed leveling of this thing, and it is printing. The first layer is gorgeous, it's beautiful. Um, all I had to do was auto bed leveling. Way cool. So in less than an hour, we are printing a file. In probably 20 minutes, we're printing a friggin' file. Like this is amazing. Like this is what we put in one, two, four, six, eight, 12 screws, four washers, and a power cable. And we're printing. Holy crap. Airy One ER20 3D printer. It's the bomb. I can't wait till they make a bigger one. And I know they are because, well, I shouldn't say I know they are. I'm hypothesizing that they are because the Thinker SE is discontinued. ER20 comes out. Small. I'm thinking there's going to be like a Thinker sized. Um, version that's identical to this one only bigger and that's exciting and I can't wait for it this is cool I love this loving it look at that beautiful Cali cube loving it loving it loving it come to me nice All right. All right, so first print's fantastic. I'm uh, gonna now uh, calibrate the E-steps on that, and if that's all good, I'm gonna go on my computer and slice me up a Benji. 
So the reason why we want to calibrate our E-steps on our extruder is to make sure that when we tell it or the printer tells the extruder to put out a hundred millimeters of filament that a hundred meters of uh, millimeters of filament are actually coming out um, because of the stepping uh, motion or that and the size of the gears and everything um, that might not always come out the way you want it so you calibrate that so what you do is you just heat up your nozzle and you snip it flush and then you're going to tell it to do 100 millimeters and then you're going to snip it again and take a measurement so that's what we're going to do so as you can see i've already set the uh temperature there i'm going to go to motion i'm going to move axis move the extruder move it 10 millimeters and we're going to tell it to go to 100 as you can see it's slowly coming out and then once it's done extruding or moving the extruder motor we're going to snip it take a measurement the the reason that we set the temperature is that the software uh, prevents cold extrusion and why it does that is because if it tries to extrude when your nozzle is cold it obviously isn't melted so it's not going to go through the nozzle so your extruder gear is just going to chew up your filament and uh, nothing's going to happen so that's why we do that easiest thing to do is just watch the gear there when it stops moving you know that it's done and it stopped moving you can tell by that screw there it's not moving so let's snip and measure Alright, so we just snip that off just like that and we measure that. And we're going to make note of the measurement too. I like to use this as the easiest thing here. I just line it up, flatten it out, way off. So we want to know exactly how much we do. So we're at about. 96 maybe I need to get right in there the trick is to hold it flush at zero and flatten it out we're at 96 So at 96, we're going to remember that because we're going to do a little bit of mathematics so we can change that. Um, now we're going to go check and take a look and see what uh, the E-steps are actually set for. So to do that, we'll go to our configuration screen. On this particular uh, machine, we're going to go to uh, configuration. Advanced settings down here to steps per mil and our e-steps are 93 right there so we're going to change that so we're going to make note of 93 the other one was 96 to figure out what our e-step should be it's pretty simple you take your uh, target extrusion which is 100 you divide it by your actual measured extrusion which in our case was 96 millimeters and we are going to multiply that by our current e-steps and that'll tell us what we want our new e-steps to be so it would be um, 100 divided by 96 times 93 and that should give us 96.875 now i'm not a math whiz i actually type this into a spreadsheet I made just to make things quick for me. Um, I recommend you do the same or I'll zoom in and you can see it. So down here I set them for my various printers and I keep a running kind of metric. I uh, got the formula right here. So my new E step. So it takes the sum of A2 divides that by B2 and it multiplies that by C2 to give new E steps and then over here I carry it down so that when I'm making adjustments I don't have to take this figure and put it there and that's for uh, 
my E-step calibration. I also have a filament uh, extrusion multiplier calculator too based on a specific um, calibration print that I do but we aren't going to get into that we shouldn't need to worry about that uh, so we're going to take this 96.875 we're going to go downstairs and uh, gonna put that new one in there and run another test uh, we're going to do <clears throat> Gonna do a benchy then uh, once we set that that was nine six point eight seven Nine six point eight seven five is the figure we are gonna put into there So we're gonna run down there really quick and put that in nine six point eight seven five Once again, we're just gonna go down here to configuration you want to try and do this quick too. I left my, uh, my nozzle running here and I got no filament in there if you don't like to do that's how you get good chance to get clogs that way nine six point oh, eight seven five or in this case Nine six point eight. There. We'll go back and want to store those settings. And it beeps. You're saved. All right. Let's go pull our uh, memory card out here, and we're gonna check the Cura settings. And I'm going to create a slicer profile based on those settings. Comes with the Cura settings uh, profile right on here. Um, if you're not familiar with setting up your own profiles, I recommend you just stick with Cura. But uh, I like using Slicer, that's what I started with, so I'm kind of biased on that one. So I'm uh, just going to create myself a profile. Then I'm going to slice a Benchy, and we're going to print her. Stay tuned. Set up a profile in uh, my Repetier host for Slicer. Set up the uh, custom G code start for the file so it should uh, enable the auto leveling right off the bat and save that so that in the future we can just call that uh, mesh that we've saved to the EEPROM. And uh, anyhow, I throw it in and print up a green Benji. Okay, so right now we're just waiting for the bed to heat up. After that, nozzle will heat up. Should do a G28 homing and then a G29 auto bed leveling. After that, it'll save the mesh. So I'm going to sit by just in case and test it out. Appears to look excellent. Now the only thing I don't know is if an offset needs to be set. So again, I'm gonna keep my hand here on the reset button. Yeah, it should be Start the print momentarily. So let's get ready. Oh. Rid of that. I've also programmed it to uh, lay me a skirt to get the print started. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to put some. Oh no, we're doing good. We're doing all right. 
Let's see. Oh yeah. Skirt's coming good. Yeah, I should probably put a little bit of a little bit of Z offset on that. Squish that down. It's not looking too bad actually. I think we'll be alright. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. Right there. Yeah, it's laying down the uh Benchy text beautifully. So this really is the most painless 3D printer assemble uh, uh, I could ever hope for. <laughs> it was great. It was amazing. Loving it. Loving it. Well, we're doing pretty good. Um, we do have a little bit of lift off. Looks like a little bit of. Um, warping happening there so I think I might have lost adhesion so I think I'm gonna have to try a little bit of Z offset on that one and what that means is essentially uh, I'm gonna lower the uh, the offset from the bed leveling pin so leveling is hitting here and I want to just go down just a little bit more I'm thinking I'm gonna let it play out it looks like it's still grabbing on chances are once it gets a little higher it's gonna and break free maybe after this print's done I'll check it out and from there like I said I'll probably put a little bit of um, offset on that one and it was inevitable okay Lower that Z height just a little bit. Getting perfect level or perfect layer here. And yeah, I think it's going to be fantastic. Hopefully that solves the uh, the warping problem there. Oh, I should also uh, increase that temperature there of the nozzle up to 215. That's where I think we want to be. There we go. Done. zoom in there for you to see the other day I set it up and started calibrating the e-steps in the extrusion multipliers now some might argue that you don't need to do that on a good 3d printer right out of the box it should print fine and you know for all intents and purposes every 3d printer I've purchased has printed fine out of the box fine printed fine on the supplied calibration cubes or the test prints that they give on the SD cards all of them were able to accomplish that but they're not perfect and they're not perfect because uh, for one I don't know how they sliced the file I have no idea they might have done it with their profile that they provide for Cura or whether it be slicer or whatever I don't know what the settings are um, I can go through it and look and but that's not the point the point being is that they have no idea what filament I'm putting into my machine. They have no idea how fast I want to print with it. They have no idea what temperature that filament's needing to be. So with that said, I do lots of calibrations and test prints. I already showed you, uh, you know, kind of how I get started with my new printers, how I get started. So I'm going to put the camera down and I'm going to show you some progressions that I've made the other day and um, go over them. And, and by no means am I done. I got lots of work to do on this one. This is a new printer. I got more calibrations to do. I got to figure out what temperature I need to print at and the speed. But before you start messing around with your slicer settings, um, you want to print as slow as you need to. Uh, just to make sure that you're in calibration for at least your E-steps and your extrusion multipliers. Because those, those are important. And once you get those dialed in, you probably aren't going to need to adjust them unless you're switching filaments. If you stay with the same filament, um, you should be good. Yeah, I mean, you still need to still need to monitor your system, make sure that it's in check. Um, you know, by routinely, if you're starting a new print project, print out some Cali cubes, print out a Benchy. Make sure everything's on the same page still, because things change. Maybe you accidentally change slicer settings too, but that's... You know, you'll have to worry about that yourself. Anyhow, 
I'm gonna go through some progressions that I've done. And, and this, is not, this is not uncommon. Um, you get a new printer or you make adjustments, you wanna make sure that everything's still good. So I've got some thin wall uh, tests here. And I got my Cali cubes. Now this Cali cube, this is the one that it came with, that, that one. Um, I didn't slice that, so I'm not, uh, I'm not overly concerned. Yeah, that, that's an indication that the system prints. Now, the next stuff uh, is, is what you do to ensure that it's printing well or printing to your satisfaction. So this is the first bench I did after um, you know my first calibrations of E-steps. Um, and you can see here, got some extrusion issues. Uh, the overhangs were perfect. Um, so that tells me that the system can print good. The other indications, though, were that there's some more issues, uh, which likely were temperature related. You know, so we adjust the temperature, and we print hotter. So yeah, we've printed hotter, but as you can see now, we're dealing with uh, droopy filament on the bridging and overhangs. <clears throat> so that tells us, you know, looking overlooking it, the quality is great, right? I mean, the quality is good. Um, now it's a matter of dialing in the temperature. Um, you know, here's some indications that there's issues too on these, these thin walls here. As you can see, we've got extrusion issues. Um, turned out we need to increase our extrusion multiplier when I checked it with the calipers. And then this is the, the latest one here. We're bang on and pretty close to 0.4 mils. Um, again, Cali cubes right here. So uh, the first one, you know, we can see that on all of them, the uh, printing up the Z axis is fine. However, you get to the top here and you can see that there is some under extrusion issues. So those were, uh, those were fixed by um, you know, adjusting your thin wall there. It tells it that when it's uh, spitting out 0.4 mil thickness that is coming out 0.4 mil thickness and again um, you know more adjustments were needed I think I adjusted this probably at least three times um, and after each adjustment I confirm you can confirm by printing the thin walls and if that looks good then give yourself you know spend the extra time do a Cali cube so this one here um, looks like we're bang on here um, only issue is is print speed and temperature so uh, as you can see there we're melting a little stuff more than we should now we get to our Bulbasaurs so the first one just atrocious so after the first Benchy I think is uh, when I printed this after adjusting um, the uh, uh, extrusion multiplier I think turned out horrible ugly so we adjusted that okay so it looks good however we've got the wall adhesion uh, issues actually this one's that one goes there so we did some more calibrations zeroed in on it and printed again and all is good except you can see towards the top there we're having issues um, which I believe to be temperature related. So I increased the temperature and now we have this beautiful thing here but all is not 100% because if you look here I've slowed that down and increased the temperature so much that it's melting on the small pieces because it's it's dwelling a little too long for the fans to keep it cool. So now we are at the point, we're at the point now where we need to finally figure out our slicer settings. How fast are we going to print this and at what temperature? So this particular filament seems to love the higher end of the temperature. So that presents a bit of a challenge because now we need to print it fast enough that it's not going to stay too hot so that we can get fine details because we got to cool that stuff. If we don't cool it fast enough, it droops, it melts, it doesn't give us beautiful 
um, you know, beautiful lines, beautiful perimeters, beautiful contours, beautiful details. We lose those details if we're printing too hot. So if I printed a Benchy uh, at that speed and temperature, you're probably looking at, let's see if I got something I can show you. Something along the lines of this right here. You can have all these little melting, uh, you know, like really ugly. Now this is on a different printer, but uh, when you can't cool properly and you're printing slow, um, you get ugliness. Now if you can cool it properly and print at the right speed, you get that. So that's kind of what we're aiming for. Well, that is exactly what we're aiming for. Is exactly what we're aiming for. Anyhow, we got more stuff to do with that. So um, I'm not going to end the video here. I'm going to do some more calibrations on the temperature of that. And then I can do a benchy, show you how beautiful it's going to be with this Airy One ER20. And then we can end the video there. A few hours worth of test prints and everything is perfect. There it is guys, behold the Airy One ER20. On that note, we're going to have to finish this video because I can't just keep on going indefinitely doing test prints and stuff. That printer's ready to go. It's ready to put into production whatever you're doing, whether you have a project in mind, whether you just want to do some trinkets or whether you just want to collect dust with it until you come up with something that you're going to need it for. Don't go away just yet because I do have a few more things to say about this printer before you leave and I'm going to show you some of those prints. So within a few hours of doing some test prints after I'm sure a 20 minute setup, I'm doing some really beautiful things here. Hang on. So just a little bit of testing. We got ourselves a perfect XYZ Cali Cube. We got near flawless 3D benches. Only issue right now, again, is getting that temperature dialed in. Printed myself a beautiful little mini planter for succulents. A Bulbasaur Pokemon. And this beautiful vase. Now, I don't know if the camera can do this justice, but believe me when I say this is absolutely flawless in every way. Except for slicing. Um, it's my first time slicing this kind of design. And maybe this design doesn't lend for it. But everything you see on here, you can see on the slicer preview. So it's not a defect of the printing. Um, but you might not even be able to tell it. Anyhow. Amazing for a machine that is all of a couple days old and if I had all the time to do it It would have been all done on the first day amazing stuff That wraps it up for that amazing printer right there absolutely love it And I hope everyone is gonna do a bigger one guys. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video if you found it helpful or if you liked it, if you're entertained by it, please help me out. Give me a thumbs up. And if you like the content that you've seen and want to see more of it, hit that subscribe button because I've got more content coming out all the time. If you're into drone flying, electronics projects, if you're into 3D printing, this channel is for you. Again, thanks for watching. Take care.